He is a cultural activist who supports the research and celebration of diversity and cultural heritage. Jim is an award-winning filmmaker and writer, and his latest book of poems is called Sunfire. And also, this book is available at that uh, table for you to purchase later on. And he loves all things Italian. <laughs> Jim works um, with his wife, uh, Mary, at Hooked on Books, Hooked on Books Bookstore. Please welcome Jim Chiletti. Thank you. Uh, as you were performing, I was instantly regretting saying that I was going to go second. <laughs> How am I going to follow this? Uh, anyhow, that's, the, that's going to be the nature of the spoken word today, uh, in a sense that we're all going to be intimidated by somebody that goes before us with such beautiful talent. Yeah. I thank you. And I'm going to share a little, a, a short poem to celebrate my Italian heritage and then a, a longer poem. The longer poem is more history than poetry. To know how far this community in Colorado Springs has come. My wife, who was born here, told me about how she used to hear her father cursing the Ku Klux Klan because they would burn crosses on Knob Hill and he had to go drag the burnt embers off of his property. Today, we elect African Americans to office in Colorado Springs. Yes. We've come a long way, but we have a lot farther to go. Anyhow, Italian omelets. <laughs> Italian omelets. Scramble the eggs in this green bowl into the whirlpool clattering fork. Ah, the aroma of sweet peppers frying as they did in my grandmother's kitchen on a green and wooded hillside in Greci near Foggia, Italy. Turn up the stove heat until the peppers sizzle. Fork one out and daub it on a towel. Your mouth waters. Taste the Italian sun. Now the eggs whipped. Tip the bowl over the skillet, watch the yellow waterfall crackling into hot oil, sounding of the ocean in a shell, sounding of the ocean in a shell, near the beach along the Adriatic, where my great-great-grandmothers crossed over from Albania. I hear my voice in the eggs in their bellies. Oh, I love to stir the scrambled eggs into the sweet and green fried peppers and watch them bubble and cook into a fluffy cloud. To America, Grandfather O'Rath said. Me too, said Grandmother Bruno. A frittata, my father Leonard said. Me too, I say. Mangiamo, let's eat. <laughs> Probably the happiest day of my life was when I went to Fayeto, Italy, and in a book for 1886, found my grandfather's birth certificate. I suddenly became an Italian instead of a meatball Catholic. <laughs> I'm going to share with you a poem that I wrote for the Martin Luther King breakfast. There's a lot of references to Martin Luther King in it. I've adapted a little of this for today. Um, There's five voices in this piece. It was written for Native American, Hispanic, Asian American, African American, and Anglo voices to represent some of the diversity of peoples and cultures in our community for the All People's Breakfast. Native American voice was written by Sabrina Forrest, a Mohawk. Remember me. It does no good to stir the ashes of a dead fire and our sorrow, sorrow cannot erase the crimes of the past. The Iroquois wampum belt represented 1,000 years of democratic principles that we shared with our immigrant brothers and sisters. Our constitution, our contribution to the constitution, our contribution to the constitution was we, the people. It began as an ancient phrase. And Dr. King was a visionary spiritual healer who understood that the pursuit of all our happiness 
depends upon the understanding that we, the people, from the Iroquois nation, means not just some of the people, but all of us who are Americans. A voice written for the Asian Americans. <coughs> Keep in mind that we have at least 15,000 people in our community of Asian American descent. Uh -huh. Remember me. When the daily coal cars chug down the rails and you hear the horns in our community, remember how our western railroads were built on the backs of Asian immigrants. And when you enjoy, enjoy a salad or tomatoes or grapes, remember that I, Martin Luther King, stood with Cesar Chavez and the farm workers, not only for a living wage and better working conditions, but to validate their contribution to American life. Remember, too, how Martin Luther King stood with the sanitation workers in Memphis and today stands with all workers, for they keep America working. And when we deny anyone justice, equal rights, and respect, and dignity for their work, we are all incarcerated without being behind bars. Stand up with me for them. Our work to honor all peoples continues because justice has no finish line. Mm -hmm. For the Hispanic American boys, remember me. I, Martin Luther King, was addressed, uh, arrested and jailed many times for nonviolent civil disobedience. Today, our, our Hispanic brothers and sisters sit in jails and prisons, even here in our criminal justice center, in holding pens for the immigration authorities awaiting after being good citizens for 10, 20, and 30 years to be deported to Mexico. Why? Because they, like our ancestors, wanted to pass the Statue of Liberty, that bright torch, and what it meant to all immigrants, what we all want, and what we all have a right to, freedom from oppression, jobs with wages to feed and clothe our families, affordable health care, good schools, civil rights, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, today, we are all in prison with our brothers and sisters, and more than 20,000 men and women in Colorado prisons. It isn't over. Let my people go. Let my people go. Mm -hmm. An African-American voice. Remember me, it wasn't that long ago, 1942, Chicago, 1949, St. Louis, 1952, Baltimore, sit-in sponsored by the Congress of Racial Equality. February 1st, 1960, wasn't that long ago when four brave, young, black men risked their lives sitting at that Greensboro lunch counter. Wasn't that long ago that Rosa Parks Park sat steadfast on that infamous bus. Would you have sat with her? Wasn't that long ago that Martin Luther King stood in front of Abraham Lincoln and voiced his dream for African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, Anglos, all peoples imprisoned by civil and social injustice, poverty, hateful discrimination, ignorance, and more? Was not that long ago Martin Luther King had a dream and it is our job to continue to fulfill it. The Anglo voice, in closing, remember me. Many voices could speak today. The homeless in the park in Colorado Springs, the Casa children, the men and women who have lost their homes and jobs, workers treated like slaves, women in the slave trade, and more. Today it is not enough just to remember our cultural heritage. We must continue the nonviolent, proactive march for civil liberties and honor and justice for peoples of all colors. As silence is the same as betrayal, Martin Luther King said, we must take a stand to continue to be proactive, to bless and teach our children and our neighbors that appreciation of our cultural heritage enriches our community with a rich diversity of celebrations of our history, the music of our languages, our cultures, our art and food and music, and that all peoples of all colors and all tongues 
deserve and have a right to the same freedoms, the same rights, the same opportunities, justice, blessings, and human life for all. Just as the generations of our grandfathers and great-great-grandfathers, your ancestors were alive when Columbus discovered America. Our grandfathers and grandmothers go backwards in time. So too, our voice and work for honor and justice must go forward because the beauty and celebration of our cultural heritage beauty and celebration of our cultural heritage beauty and celebration of our cultural heritage has no finish line. I thank you.